always be the hunters. They got a baby. Wendy ain't changed her last name yet. Abelardo, I always have a hard time saying your name. Abelardo, Mr. G. Guerrero Jr. You say it perfect, though. Why you that, say was Aber- perfect. that was perfect. Oh, my gosh. I thought I was going to. Listen, when I had to do your commercial, because mm-hmm. when I reached out to your people. You know how many people call me and say, yo, you got a commercial on Tasha K. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know, because I've been trying to secure this interview. So yes. I was like, let me do something so yes. I can get you here. I love it. I love because, it. I love it. You know, my uh, Usha. Yes. We're talking about Dr. Sabi, everybody. OK, yes, yes, so yes. you were you spent a great deal of time. With Dr. Sabi. No. 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 A lot of people think I did. Just spent about maybe a little over a year. You have so many lectures. Every. So many celebrity uh, healing. I had no idea who Dr. Sebi was until September, September of 2014. And I live six miles away from him in Honduras. Oh, so you're from Honduras? Yes, my parents are from Honduras. I have a home in Honduras. My, well, my family have we we have homes out there. But you reside in in New York. Both. Okay, so I, I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you. I really thought Shout that you out guys. To Spirit. All right. Oh, who's Spirit? Um, Spirit Airlines, they got cheap flights. Oh, <laughs> I will ne- listen. I will <laughs> never ever fly Spirit because. No, but you get to go to Honduras for about one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Then you got to pay for the seat. You got to pay for the bag. You got to pay for the food. You got to pay for the toilet paper. Not if you have everything where you're going already. I go to Spirit with just my phone. I go to Honduras with just my phone. Oh, because everything. you have a house over there. Yeah. So you have clothes. I have stuff. everything okay. at home over there. Okay. Okay. So is your house paid for over there? Of course. Stuff? How far is it from the uh, Usha village? Six miles about. You did say that. Six yes. miles. Okay. Well, well, let's get into it. The, Listen, main, I- the main house where my family's at, where Olga and Esa Francisca's at. What did you just say? Now, my sister. This is my older sister. I like messing okay. with her. Okay. Um, she's four miles away from Dr. Sebi. My house in La Ceiba is six miles away from me. So is there anyone that lives in Honduras, in your city, that doesn't know? Dr. Savy, or does everybody know Dr. Savy? It would be hard for someone to know that don't know Dr. Sebi. He's very famous in La Ceiba and he actually stays in, he stays, he stays closer to Jutiapa. Okay. But that's like eight miles from La Ceiba. But anywhere, anybody in that area, they know who he is, mm-hmm. but they didn't know how famous he was in the United States until he passed away. Now question. Does he, okay, so is he like a doctor to Hondurians back home or is he mostly like a doctor to just people who seek him from his teachings online and from other people's like recommendations? In Honduras, he's Alfredo. He's Fred. Like the people. So they don't see him as a doctor there. Yes. It's just like if you're, you know, it's it's a saying in, um, in Spanish, no sos rey en tu propia tierra. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. I, I don't okay. even know what you just said. <laughs> said. You can't be king in your own village. Oh. So um, it's like in New York. We see all these celebrities all the time. So somebody else will walk by and see um, Nas and lose their mind. And it's just like a regular Wednesday or Tuesday for us to run into somebody like that. Yeah, it's like that in Atlanta here, too. Yeah. We yeah, Atlanta's everybody. like little New-, New York now. Everything is out here. Everybody. I'm mm-hmm. talking about there's a celebrity that I haven't seen. And I'm like, okay. yo, hey, how you doing? I'm out. So well, some you, of them recognize me. You, I was say you're a celebrity now. <laughs> no, I'm no, not a no, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. I'm Tasha. All right. <laughs> La Tasha. I'll give you that. <laughs> La Tasha. Now, I've been wanting you to come on the podcast and talk about your relationship with Dr. Say, because there's a lot of controversy surrounding his death. Now, I don't know if you had a chance to check out. I did an interview. I think it was like two years ago <clears throat> with uh, Ma, I yes, believe it yes. wasn't his first wife, but she mm-hmm. was the wife that um, started, um, I guess, their healing business. Yes. OK. Well, how that whole situation, his first wife, her name is Melba. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. Her name is Mel, but she—that's the first first wife. She's in LA right now, and um, she has his first. Well, his kids with with that marriage, Abdul, um, Jamala, like those are his kids with her. So she was an affiliate. So she, she, she was with okay. She was with Fred. Alfredo. Alfredo. She was with Fred, slick Fred from New Orleans. He was Orleans. big. He had diabetes. He uh, high blood pressure. With that Fred. 
Okay. Um, my eye, well, according to what Dr. Sebi told me, he was going to see someone else in um in the hospital where he worked, Martin Luther King Hospital. Okay. She didn't go to work that day. So my I was there in the girl's place. So he had a plate of food that he cooked. He was a cook. Okay. It was some bread, I believe. And my I told him you shouldn't eat that. Why? Because she was a vegan at that point. She, but, what, but bread is vegan, though. Some breads no, are. No, spelt some bread is, but okay. any other kind of bread that, you know, swallow up in your body. Yeah. So she was like, you shouldn't eat that. And then he was like, so what shall I eat? And she was like, well, I can let you know. So that's how they started dating. Oh. So they started dating after that. So so he did he divorce his first official wife? No. Like for Ma? No. No. As far as I, my knowledge, he didn't. Now, see, that's why I'm glad you're here mm-hmm. because he he talked Dr. to Sebi you. Dr. Sebi lived in his own world. Like what, not just the American and Western medicine. Mm-hmm. He had his own rules in his own head. Mm-hmm. In his own, like you said, like we would divorce, marry again. Like um, he would, he didn't divorce. So he was a polygamist. Mm, yeah, I guess in America you could call that. In, in, America. in Africa, he was just a, a man. Well, in Africa, they call it polygamy. My husband comes from a polygamous family. Oh, he d- yeah. Okay. Yeah. You That's what they call it. it. You so. said it, not me. No, it's, okay. I mean, it's, it's something I've been very open with okay, on the okay, channel. Okay. Like, yeah. I mean, does he believe in polygamy? No. He said it was too stressful. Watching mm-hmm. all the wives fight, kids, too much. So he never wanted that. Um, I guess he, speaking of Dr. Sebi, I guess he didn't put, um, consider it that because based on my knowledge, they wasn't all together at one time. It was like he would go from one to the other to the other. Mm. I got a question about that, but we'll come back later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back later. But the controversy, the reason, like, I, I, the reason I wanted you on the podcast is because when I did the interview with uh, Ma'a mm-hmm. and Usha, um, they had another sister in the back too. I forgot her name. Dang, I forgot her name. Was she Ma'a daughter? Yes. Weewa. Okay, that was her name. Very, very sweet. Weewa is. Not only sweet, she's very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. She actually was with Dr. Sebi and Ma ah in the beginning stages of what they was doing. So we were, um, she would be second just to Ma ah in my book. Wow. Yes. That was a very painful interview for Ma ah. She had never, ever spoken to anyone about her relationship on that level with Dr. Sebi, as well as him and the, I guess, his other wives. Mm -hmm. Um, One wife being, uh, she's referring to herself as the official Mrs. Sebi. And we're just going to leave it because that's what she calls herself, Mrs. Sebi. And, you know, did you did you get a chance to, did you watch that interview that I did? Yes, I did. You did? Yes, I did. I never asked you that. Yes, I did. <laughs> what did I, you think of it? I actually watched because. Because it was, it was, it was a lot in there. No. They talked about his death. They talked about the mm-hmm. affair and how um, Mrs., the one who's referring to herself as Mrs. Sabi, uh, stole him. Like mm-hmm. she, you know, I guess she was a, a immigrant and they took her in and mm-hmm. she started sleeping with Dr. Sabi and. Mm-hmm. You know, my I was raising her kids and her, mm-hmm. you know, both of their kids. It was just a mess. I yeah, mean, she okay. cried. She broke down during that interview. I can imagine. What did you think? Because, you know, my eye personally yes. and, you know, wh- OK, what is the one that's calling herself Mrs. Say? Because there's so many. Mm-hmm. What is her name? She does all the interviews on Sway in the morning. Oh, she you're does... talking about um, the one who calls herself um, Mrs. Dr. Sebi. Yes, that's her. That's oh. I guess that's what we can call her. Mrs. Yeah, Dr. her name Sebi. is Patsy. Patsy Williams. Patsy, that's right. Patsy Williams, okay. Yes. Now, see, I, I saw some uh, uh, court documents mm-hmm. alleging that Dr. Sebi was suing them mm-hmm. uh, before he passed, and so um, some people thought that maybe allegedly uh, they had something to do with his death in Honduras. Um, that Patsy Williams had something to do with his death. I guess because he brought a lawsuit against them for a very large amount of money. No, um, that's false. She wouldn't have anything to do with his death. No. Okay, so you, do you understand where I'm going you with this? Though, like, I, I'm not here trying to put no murder no, on no, no one, I but I mean, it was just so that, many no. conspiracies surrounding his death. Now, Usha said that she got a call, mm-hmm. um, stating that sh- uh, I guess somebody poisoned him mm-hmm. while he was in the prison. Yes. Now, do you know what happened to Doctor Sabi? I mean, you spent a year with him. You documented him, all of mm-hmm. his lectures. He's, you know, told you some of his most intimate secrets. 
Did yeah. you talk to Dr. Sebi before he died while he was in prison? No, I didn't speak to Dr. Sebi um, while he was in prison due to the West Coast connection. Like, well, the West Coast, his office, they they didn't like nobody really close to Dr. Sebi. Anybody that, because when you bring um, structure to um, chaos, there's it's going to be resistance. Fire. Yeah, okay. it's going to be resistance. So I didn't speak to him when when he was in jail. And back to your thing about him being poisoned. Okay. That's 100% accurate. And, um, now the question is who poisoned him? My, my, well, I can see you didn't read the whole book. Well, (laughs) it's not that I didn't read the whole book. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give it away. Okay. Much. Okay. Well, in my book, I explain who I put the spotlight on. And one of the things I point out in my book is how is this man have so many kids um, have this amazing legacy with some knowledgeable kids who know what they're doing and no one's <laughs> running his business in Los Angeles. And how is it that he's able to speak to me and tell me that he's invented? This is something that I, I don't even, I didn't even say in my book. Okay. He invented 10 herbs that can cure. He put, well, he didn't invent it. He put together 10 herbs okay. that can put the, that can cure um, damn near anything. And yeah, was, I heard he cured like HIV for a famous celebrity. Is that true? Yeah, definitely true. Actually, he not only really, no not only but. cured for a famous celebrity, he they he was arrested in two thousand in nineteen eighty seven. I remember that. Yeah, because you are working on a documentary with yeah uh, with Nick Cannon, Nick definitely. Cannon right now. That, now you know I know I don't you know I know we're jumping all over but that's what I know, podcast like, yeah. it's okay it's cool it's a okay. podcast we'll come back to it to all of Dr. Sabi's followers I've got something for y'all you all are going to discover the untold and never before heard story of one of the most important healers of our time in Abelardo Guerrero Jr.'s book his right hand man titled My Journey with Dr. Sabi visit www.drsabibook504.com to order your copy now. Ava mm-hmm. DuVernay. Now, she just signed a deal with Netflix mm-hmm. for a Dr. Sabi documentary. Is that affiliated with what you and Nick Cannon are doing? I have no idea. I know that Nick Cannon is, um, he's putting up everything for the documentary <laughs> he's doing. And the the um, documentary he's doing is all about Dr. Sabi's case and how he beat the New York State. Okay, so it's not surrounding his life. It's just on the case. On the case. Okay. It has bits and pieces of his life, but the majority of it is about the case. Okay. Because so what Ava's people, doing is probably completely different. I have no idea about what Ava's doing. Okay. Because I, I seen it was kind of a marketing ploy to say mm-hmm. that they had a deal, mm-hmm. but the documentary wasn't developed. So, you know, being that I've worked in PR, okay. I know how that you works. You know that language. You get mm-hmm. a buzz or hopefully you get funding. So she may not have funding for it now. And, and she's just putting out press releases to try to get people interested in it. Smart, smart. Well, that's, that's Hollywood. The same. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would do. But, you know, <laughs> they all do it. They all do it. I'm just saying. That's Hollywood. So, but um, what Nick Cannon is doing is almost completed or has he completed it? Is, as far as all of the filming. What, what, is what both of you. Yes. Because, okay. okay. no, no, it's Nick Cannon. Nick is Nick Cannon's project. He hired me as one of the producers. Then and that's your project too? Well, okay. I, Stop that. Okay, okay. And um, he actually, he'd been to Africa. We went to Honduras. Okay. Um, I took him to Dr. Sebi home in Usha Village. He met with the people there. We interviewed some people who knew Docs, his family members. All the shooting is done now. It's just in post now. Okay, post is a hell of a beast. I'm telling you, you already know how to have a go. good editor. I'm and remember, you. we interviewed a whole bunch of people that spoke for hours, and they got to cut all of that up into like an hour and twenty minutes. Jesus or so. Christ! You know that's kind of the downfall of doing documentaries and things like that. Overall. Can you give us a little bit, like, can you give us something? I know you said it's about the case, but like, Mm -hmm. you know, was there something that kind of stuck out during the filming process that you could share with us that, you know, Nick probably won't get mad about, you know, just one thing I like about, okay. One thing I like about Nick is that he found some court documents that nobody could find. What? Nick. Did he call up the feds? I have no idea. I don't know his. He was able, we've been, well, not just me, the family, everybody been looking for these court documents. Okay. 
couldn't find, we were looking for them for years. Nick was able to find it within months. And so this is going to be like first, like new information that no to one, the public. This documentary is going to show how he beat the case. What was said, what wasn't said. Because a lot of people, they said um, Doc had to bring some, they told him to bring nine people to to the courthouse. He brought 77 people. <laughs> and they try to, because they try to arrest him for practicing medicine without a license. In order for you to practice medicine without a license, you need some kind of chemicals inside of your, inside of your um, herbs. Mm-hmm. They send it to Lancaster um, Laboratories. The, the results came back. It was not one chemical in it. It's like if he was curing you with an apple or with um, kale or something like that. So that's how he beat that case because you have you need a chemical in it to, to be able to consider medicine. So are you literally busting out Big Pharma right now? Who? You. No, you, you are. This <laughs> nah, is your show. Nah. <laughs> you are. Big Pharma got chemicals in. <laughs> no, no, I'm not nah, saying, nah, nah, I'm nah, not nah, saying nah, that chemicals nah. aren't good because that's why we have doctors who know how to use those chemicals. Dr. Sebi was given that name. He, he called himself Fred. Yeah. Now, I do want to ask you this because, I mean, um, Ma'a, when I spoke to her mm-hmm. two years ago, um, very, very humble just her spirit is just yeah. like an angel. Yes. I mean, anybody that comes in contact with this woman, you will feel what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you've yes. met her. She explained to me, and, and we spoke about this just a few minutes ago, that, you know, she showed Dr. Sabi the way. Mm-hmm. So how is it that she mixed all the herbs, created the herbs, but he became famous? My eye is very humble. If you look at some of Dr. Sebi earlier videos, he mm-hmm. would say that she was the one making the herbs. She was the one curing everybody. He was just the one with the big mouth. So um, I'm not going to say she taught Dr. Sebi. They mm-hmm. learned together. That's what I what I learned. Speaking to her and speaking to him. Okay. Like they would do these. They're, like if me and my girl, we, um, we date, we go to the movies, we go... Their dates was, let's go to Mexico. Let's go see what this herb do. Mm. They would go to speak to indigenous people. And if I, if I had a headache, what herb do you take? They would give them the herbs. The Mexicans or the indigenous people would give them the herbs. Mm-hmm. So then they would take these herbs and find out what's the active ingredient in these herbs. So mm-hmm. they know what to give somebody with a head, who needed a headache. And Dr. Sebi was a... So I think they both complemented each other because Dr. Sebi was a steam engineer. So working on the ship, he knew he had to maintain the pH balance of the water at 7.0 or else it was going to be no good for them to drink or whatever. Mm. So he took those same, what he learned on the ship and applied it to the herbs. So that's, that's why I said she didn't teach him. And it's like each one teach one. They mm-hmm. learned together. And instead of going to the movies, they went to Mexico. Okay. Now, you know, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here for a little okay. bit. You know, I, I, I love Dr. Sabi's work. I, I've been following I him. You, yeah, I, you know, I fucks with Dr. Sabi. I'm not heavy, scared of okay? you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I no. fucks with him. Heavy. I don't want mm-hmm. nobody getting it twisted. But I would ask, as any woman would do, if mm-hmm. this was the woman that helped to create the Dr. Sabi that we know, why has he ever shared with you? Because I know you guys, you know, you spoke a lot in that one year that you followed him around, Mm -hmm. you know, with his camera to his lectures and everything. Did he ever share with you why I guess he would, how can I put this? I don't want to, you know, disrespect, you know, the family at all, but why would you leave the woman that helped to create who you are for someone else that's now claiming the brand that had nothing to do with it? Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. Why would you think he left her and not her leave him? Well, I mean, if he, according to her, if he was sleeping with a woman that they had helped and moved her in the house, I mean, when a man strays, I mean, he's leaving, right? No? No. When a man, there's a lot of men that stray and women that don't leave. 
Uh, that's true too. I mean, you got me with that one. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's true too. I'm just saying, like he was so powerful. His name is so powerful. It, it, His legacy, I believe, right now, I'm not gonna say it's compromised, but it's confused because mm-hmm. I have so many people that reach out to me. They want to know. I ordered from California. Mm-hmm. I ordered from this person. I ordered from that person. This gave me an allergic reaction. This made this did me good. Who who do we who who do we order from? Where do we get our products? Well, me, myself, I get my herbs from my eye and I get my herbs from Abdul Bowman. And I actually get a lot of my herbs from KT to Arts Degree, who's here in Atlanta. Okay. Like, these are people that I was able to. And they are, and I I did see you name them in the back of the book. So if anybody wants to know, like, who you order from and Mm -hmm. people that you recommend because you did spend a great deal of time, Please, please, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave the link below so that yes. they can order the book. Matter of fact, we're going to play the commercial. So I've been okay. playing the commercial for a while, so they'll know exactly where to go to order it. But you know, these, these are people that I was able to get close to. How do you know Dr. Sabin? In 2014, I found out that my sister had lupus. Oh, see, I was going to ask you, my next question was going to be, do do you know anyone personally that he saved in front of you? I, I do. Like you. I I like like you. Oh, no, we got a lot to talk about here. So your sister. My, this is how you came to know Dr. Sabin. My, my sister was, she, I found out she had lupus. She had eight, lupus eight years before I found out. So I'm at the house with my niece, um, Denise. We call her Nunu. Okay. And shout she, out to Nunu. Shout out to Nunu. <laughs> big mouth Nunu. Thank you for your big mouth Nunu. <laughs> so Nunu said, oh, she told me it's a, it's a shame that Auntie Eva is not, is not doing well. She might not. They said that she might die. Oh, wow. And I'm like, excuse me. I just spoke to my sister a couple of weeks ago because she lived in North Carolina. Okay. So I immediately called my sister and I'm like, yo, Eve, what's going on? I'm hearing you. She's like, oh, yeah, we didn't want to tell you because you, cause her and I are real close. You In the book, you see how close we are. So I was like, nah. I was like, fuck that. I'm not ready to bury my sister. So... I head to Honduras. Okay. No, no. I get on the internet. I'm looking for alternative methods of healing because Western medicine already said there's nothing they could do about it. Okay. And my older sister, Olga, I called her and I say, yo, oh, this is true about Eva? And she was like, yeah, John. Um, my family called me Junior. Okay. She said, yeah, John, um, I don't think she going to see 2015. Oh, wow. And here we are in September. I can hear you shaking in your voice. Yeah, it's about like, this. Uh, it's like, I was like, I'm not ready to bury my sister. So I get online and, um, Take I saw, time. I saw a Dick Gregory video and Dick Gregory said, oh, it's this guy in, in, um, Honduras that could cure anything. And you know how, when you talk about somebody, you see, uh, suggested videos on the side. Yeah. Dr. Sebi was right there. Okay. So I said, all right, let me see what he's, this man talking about. And I clicked. It was Dr. Sebi video, Eat the Live. Oh. So he was like, oh, um, I can cure AIDS, sickle cell anemia, herpes. Um, and he said lupus. And I said, this man said lupus. I rewind it like eight times to make sure it was lupus. So I was like, I got to meet this guy. Okay. I went to Honduras and I'm trying to get inside Usha village and I can't get in because if you don't know nobody, you can't just walk up in Usha. Mm. They got these big gates and security with these big ass guns. So I'm going, I'm going every day. I'm like, look, I got to meet this man. My sister's dying. And they're like, I'm sorry. If you don't, if you don't make an appointment or make a, um, call somebody, you can't just walk up in here. Oh, wow. So I did that for four days straight. The The fourth day, uh, um, I spoke to my lady and she was like, just pray, just pray. If, if, um, it was meant for, if this man gonna help your sister, just pray. So I, I prayed to um, my ancestors and to the almighty. And then I went to bed. I woke up in the morning. I got a, I got a inbox on Facebook and a Facebook, the young lady said, Hey, Mr. G, I, I like, I like what you do at the Wendy Williams show. I saw the pictures. And then we talked about this other mutual friend that we had some mm-hmm. kind of beef they was having. And then, um, she was like, 
if you're ever in Honduras, can you please come by my my family business? I would like for you to take pictures. I'd like to hire you to take pictures. And I'm like, what's your family business? And she said, Usha Village. Oh, wow. The law of attraction in full effect. But instead of me counting my blessings, I got mad. I said, yo, if this somebody fucking with me, it ain't funny. My sister dying. I think like, that in New my York mind, done came I out of they you. Was, I know. <laughs> it's in <laughs> <that> New York. <laughs> I just got okay. tight. And then I was like, do you know who Dr. Sebi is? And she said, that's my daddy. Oh, wow. And I, and I, she said, my name is Samar Bowman. And I said, I'm in Honduras now. I've been trying to get inside of there. And she said, oh, come tomorrow. I went the next day. I went the next day and she let me in. Doc wasn't there yet, though. So um, she said, oh, welcome to Usha. That's the sauna. That's the thermal waters. Take pictures of whatever you want. So I took the pictures mm -hmm. and I printed them out. Doc came that Saturday. Okay. That Friday. She showed them the pictures and he saw what I did. Because, you know, like with Photoshop, well, your husband would know. You would take um, any blemishes and I just hooked mm -hmm. it up, made everything look brand new. Then I took a picture of him that I downloaded from the internet and I put him in the ear mm -hmm. so he can look over Usha. Mm. So when he saw that picture. Is this the picture right here? No? No. The okay. Because I was going to look like he. Yeah. It's, in okay. the, it's inside the book. Okay. Okay. So um, he said. So when he saw that. When, when she said my father want to meet you. So I flew to Usha when I got there. When I got there. Doc was like. He didn't say anything. He was standing in the in the kitchen. I just saw that he was like six feet four. Like 120 pounds. In my mind, I was like, damn, this, this motherfucker look like he need a steak. Uh, he looks so fragile, so small. So I was yeah. expecting him to, you know. So he walked upstairs. He didn't say not one word to me. We went upstairs. He sat down. And my pictures that I took was on his bed already. Okay. He was like, he, he gestured for me to sit down. And he said, you took these pictures? And I was like, yes, sir. And I was nervous and everything. Um, because I'm like, I feel like I got my sister's destiny in my hands. Mm -hmm. And if he can't help, uh, um, I say, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then he said, you a bad motherfucker. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, this, this man cursing. So that threw me, that calmed my nerves yeah. immediately. Yeah. Cause I didn't feel like I was talking to Gandhi. I felt like I was talking to one of my brothers in, okay. in Bronzeville. Okay. And he was like. Man, you bad. He started break, breaking down everything I did in Photoshop. He said, that tree is not telling me where I added leaves, where I added paint. He said, man, this was this is what we want to do, but the, somebody always in these huts so we can't renovate. Oh. So I was like, oh, man. He said, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like the work. And then he said, all right, nigga, what you want? <laughs> <laughs> And in my mind, I'm like, no, is this conversation supposed to be like this? When I saw him smoking herb on YouTube, I said, oh, Yo, he, he's about that life. Gangster. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, my sister has lupus uh -huh. and um, I need you to help her. And then I said, I don't know how much you charge, but I'm a videographer. I'm a photographer. I'm a graphic designer. Um, I'm working at the Wendy Williams show. Um, this is what I what I can do. And he said, so you're not sick? I said, no, sir. Last time I checked, I was healthy. And he said, let me ask you something. My name is Alfredo. It starts with an A and end with an O. Mm -hmm. Does your name start with an A and end with an O? And don't tell me that Mr. G shit. And I was like, yeah, my name's Avalado. And then he was like, I'm a Sagittarius. Are you a Sagittarius? I was like, yes. I was born December 19th. Mm -hmm. He said, my mother's a Pisces. Is your mother a Pisces? And I was like, she was born March 15th. He I'm said, a Pisces. Aww. He was like, she's a Pisces. Okay. He, said, I love, he said, that those are bad women. He said, my one of my first jobs in the United States was at Martin Luther King Hospital. What you got to do with Martin Luther King? And I said, I graduated from Martin Luther King High School. And he was, then he said, my son's name is Sasa. What do that name got to do with you? And I said, my mother's name is Lucrecia, but we call her Sasa. 
He said, yeah, it's you. Sit down, motherfucker. I've been waiting for you for 30 years. What? He said, my mama told me because the man who healed him name was started with an A and ended with an O. His name was Alfredo Cortez. His mother told him that someone by the name, it wasn't going to be Alfredo, but it was going to start with an A and end with an O. It wasn't going to be Alfredo like the Mexican mm-hmm. who healed you, but it's going to start with an A and end with an O. He's going to be a Sagittarius like you. His mother's going to be a Pisces like your mother. And he's going to have these similarities and everything. So at this point, I'm like, damn, how this man knows so much about me? And I never met him before. So... He was like, we got a lot of work to do. I want to do a lecture in in Philadelphia. I want to do a lecture in Atlanta. I want to do. A- yeah, I see all his lectures. I've been like, through a couple of them. I, in I told book. him. I told him I'm not a I'm not a event planner. I'm, I'm a photographer. <laughs> this is not what I do. Okay. He was like, no. That's why on, if you see the book, it says the bridge on the no on the cover. Oh yeah. Right over my head. Uh huh. He called me the bridge because he said I was connecting. I connect people to different. I connect people to different worlds. Mm. He said, no, you're going to make it happen. So that's how. So for the people who thought I was his his relative, I'm not related to him. I didn't know who this man was until um, he did what he did for my sister. How did he heal your sister? What was the process? Well, what was my, my sister's situation? I was, so when he's telling me all of this about the lectures, I'm okay. like, okay, but back to my sister. Mm-hmm. My sister, and he was like, oh, man, lupus, lupus ain't shit. You hear that, winos? Yep, that's the squeaky clean sound that your yoni makes after using Embrace Pangea's Feminine Wash. Not only will your yoni be clean, but the rose and honeysuckle extracts will leave it smelling fresh. We all know that a fresh yoni brings on a whole new level of confidence, so visit EmbracePangea.com for your confidence boost. And while you're at it, please check out some of their other natural products, including skincare, oral care, hair care, and much, much more. And of course, I got my winos covered for a discount so use the coupon code Tasha K for ten percent off your first order. <laughs> what? That that's his exact words to me. Lupus ain't shit. And then he said, "Tell your sister to come to Usha, and um, and we'll heal her here." And I said, "No, my sister's in her bed. She she can't travel like that. She's not strong enough to travel." He's okay. Give me and this is his. I'm talking to him, shaking, okay. worried mm-hmm. about. Oh, uh, uh, give me her address. We'll send her the package to her house. Sent her the package to her house. I caught, we was actually, when she got the package, Dr. Sevy was in the car. We was driving from New York to Philadelphia. Okay. He had a lecture that day. Okay. Um. So she, my sister got the package and I called. She was okay. like, um, well, my niece, Shanice answered mm-hmm. and. I, she said, well, we read in it. A, a box came from Los Angeles and it got all these herbs and stuff. And she said, well, that's the, I said, that's the stuff that Dr. Sebi sent. So they read in it. Mm-hmm. So that was around one, one or two in the afternoon. Okay. No, around 1230 in the afternoon. Okay. So she, they read it. So when I spoke to my sister, she, I was like, yo, E, you got to take that. You got to take that. And she was like, okay, we're going to reread it and now, so we're going to see. And it would kill me whenever I hear her speak. Because she was so weak. Because at this point, she wasn't hiding it from me no yeah. more. So she's like, okay, um, Shanice is reading it and this, this, and that. We'll see what it says. So um, the pack, I said, Doc, she got the package. He said, okay. Um, then he started talking about shit in Philly. I was like, okay. He just brush- Every time I would mention it, he would brush it off like it was nothing. So, and you sitting there like my sister's on her deathbed. In the, in the back of my mind, I was getting upset, but part of me was saying he's acting confident for a reason. So, I'm I'm a rock with him because I went to look for him. Okay. I called my sister back that evening around seven thirty, mm-hmm. and um, they answered the phone. She said hello, and I was like, "Yeah, what's up, Nene? Um, let me speak to your mother." And she said, "It's me, big head." I like Eva. Mm-hmm. And she said, yeah, what the hell is in this stuff? And I'm what did she have to do? Drink it or something? Yeah, drink it. Okay. Um, but what one thing that one thing that I I see that Dr. Sebi do, 
Oh, I can't speak for everybody who's healing. No, I, I want you to talk about like, you know, your this experiences. Is, yeah. This is what I saw Dr. Sebi do with my sister. And that's why for as long as I'm alive. I'm going to forever be grateful for him. He explained to my sister how important your food was. Um, I'm not perfect. I eat, I try to eat good, but that's everybody. I, I get caught up in, but if I was sick, I know what I'm not oh, eating. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I'm not, I know what I'm not going to eat. What are you not going to eat? Chicken, teriyaki, American <laughs> deli. <laughs> what else? <laughs> uh, A lot of people want to know. I'm telling you, they're, okay. they're listening right now. This, this what are you it, not going to eat? What did Dr. I'm, Sabi tell you not to eat? No, this is what he told my sister. You eating, you eating bread, stay away from that bread, girl. You eating rice, stay away from that rice. Sugar, stay away from that sugar. I was like, so in the back of my mind, what? Like, what do you eat? What, I was like, what, what she's right. going to eat? And so he told, one. okay, back to what I was saying. What about brown rice? No? No. Okay. No. Um, he recommend um, wild rice oh. or, or quinoa. Okay. So... I sat down. My sister never met Dr. Sebi a day in her life. Oh, wow. And he healed her. My sister's still alive and well now. She cooks her own food. She's everything plant-based. She now, you know eat. I'm going to ask your sister to come on this platform, right? Okay. I'm, I'm a, she's in Honduras. I'm a, oh, Honduras? Honduras? I'm, what's that? I'm going to have to get her here. Yeah. Well, okay. she's an American citizen. She can come here anytime she wants. Okay, want, cool. Yeah, we got to talk about that. She don't have to... You don't have to worry about what you're eating if everything around you is alkaline. So she plant all her own food or grow. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about what you got to eat reading labels if you made it yourself. That's true. So Dr. Sebi did something. And this is why I'm not saying that my sister was the last person that he healed. Mm -hmm. I'm just going by my experience okay. or helped. Okay. I listened to Dr. Sebi talk to my sister on the phone. Okay, girl, this is what you got to eat. Just what you got to, I just want you to drink water now. Forget anything, soda. He walks her through her healing mm -hmm. and um, sent her herbs. Like he he sent her uh, intercellular chelation, what he called it. Mm. But he personalized it. So it's not like a package that, that, um, that you can say, I want that, the cure lupus. We like fingerprints. Nobody's the same. That's one thing I like about my eye. Ah. So how did he know, like being that he's never met her, Speaking what to, to her. send? Speaking to her. What you feel? I feel this. Okay. That sound like, yo, what you call it? I'm not. And that's another thing. I'm not a healer. I feel Dr. Sebi and I were good friends because I was one of the rare people that came around him without a pencil and a pad. Mm-hmm. Everybody who will come around, Dr. Sebi, if I do this, what do I need to drink for this? Or what do I need to eat for this? So I would see him go, oh, okay, it's going to be one of those days. And then he had to get into Dr. Sebi mode. I would come around him and be, we would talk about, because he was well-traveled and, mm -hmm. you know, I played ball overseas. So I've been all over playing basketball or just traveling, taking pictures. So we would talk about when I was in Amsterdam, like what we did in Amsterdam or what mm. we did when we was in Africa I wouldn't, I didn't have any herb questions for him. Um, I wasn't that person who um, picked his brain. So he came around me and just, he was himself. Mm. Cause I seen what he did for my sister. And I say, yo, I just, that's how, if you go on in the internet, you see all of these videos of Usha village testimonials, his lectures that I put up. Yeah, I did all of that. Um, I flew my own self to Honduras. I did all that out of my money. Like I wasn't working for Dr. Sebi. He was my friend. I paid him back for what he did for my sister. Mm. I was never a Dr. Sebi. So employee. your sister is completely healed now. Now, of course, if she reintroduces those foods back in, of course, lupus of course, is autoimmune. Of, co of course. So it just reverses so itself. To, it's so, similar to a lot of people who he, um, who he healed to got them on the right path. Mm -hmm. And they figure once you good, you could go back to, you got to healing and he would never he say he would tell you i'm not your healer you your healer because mm -hmm. i could tell you whatever you're gonna do whatever you want to do right so he him he got you he gets you out of the way of your body so your body could do what they got to do mm. that's 
that's why he never called himself a healer. He mm-hmm. would always say, the, oh, the woman's a healer. He said, because you have to be nurturing. Because I'm not going to have patience to nurture somebody the way a woman would, according to Dr. Sebi. Mm. You get it? Mm-hmm. So I never heard him. That's why when people say, Dr. Sebi, I'm eating the way, the the way, um, the alkaline way, the way you said. And he said, that's not my way. That's the way we're supposed to eat. Mm. It's not my way. I'm just a messenger. He would never. I love the fact that he was not quick to take credit for nothing. I've seen... I've seen him in interviews correct people immediately when they say, oh, we eat the way, um, we eat your way. He said, that's not my way. He said, when we, when they bought the, I hate to say slaves from Africa, mm-hmm. when they bought the scientists, the yeah. math, math petition, when they bought those brilliant people from Africa here, the mistake, according to Dr. Sebi and according to what I, they didn't bring the food back. Of course. Like he would always say, um, we was eating a certain way over there and now we come over here and now we got to eat what they eat. So instead of living to 150, um, we dying at 60, 55 mm. because we eating what we know. So it's like putting diesel in a gasoline car. Mm. You're going to go a couple of blocks, but you're, gonna go, you're not going to go as far as a gasoline car would take you. Mm. I mean, it was just so many layers to him. And like I said, it was a lot of controversy surrounding his death and being that you actually spent personal time with him because he helped you, Mm -hmm. helped your family. You know, it just it it, it comes different because it's not like, oh, I was his wife or, you know, I was his daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, you were someone that just reached out to him, wanted help. And you guys clicked up. Yes. And now here you are on a press tour Mm -hmm. promoting your book. Yes. Trying to educate people on who Dr. Sabi really was in your eyes at the time that you guys met. Now I want to ask you this. Are there any celebrities? Cause I know there were some that you spoke. I know you dedicated the book to Lisa uh, Lopez. Lisa Lopez was actually Dr. Sabi's healer. What? (laughs) What was so funny about that? Dr. Sabi told me about Lisa. He said, um, Mr. G Lisa, Lisa Lopez went on a 40 day fast. No food. No food. No water? No water, of course. Okay. Um, 40 day fast. At the end of her 40 day fast, she wo- she came to Dr. Sebi's room. I forgot what time. It was sometime late in the night. Okay. And she told Dr. Sebi, Dr. Sebi, you you talking all of this healing stuff, but you got to practice what you preach. Mm. I don't know what she saw. This is Dr. Sebi saying, I don't know what she saw when she was fasting, but. Um, because Dr. Sebi had a issue. He would like to eat Gouda cheese, believe it or not. Mm. That was like his pet. He was, he was, he was, I human. Mean, he was human, of course. Yeah. And like, he would like to eat Gouda cheese. So I don't know how she found out, but when she came back from her fast, she told him that she, you need to stop eating that Gouda cheese and some other stuff that, um, he used to do. And he, he said, I couldn't look that young lady in her eye and lie to her because I knew she knew. All I could tell her is I'm going to do the best that I can. So what do you have? Gouda cheese under his bed or something? What? No, this man, this man could send anybody <laughs> to go get whatever he want to get. Okay. So, okay. you know, it wasn't like it wasn't like um he was oblivious to the supermarkets or. What did he tell you? Did he tell you anything about her death? Lisa left eyes mm-hmm. death? Nothing that I could share on the on the air. Really? Yeah. Is that deep? Yeah. Mm. Okay. What celebrities or just people in general, like I guess what was the worst case that Dr. Sabi ever took on and healed? Did he ever share that with you? Well, worse than AIDS? I mean, because some people have a combination. They'll have AIDS, they'll have herpes, Mm -hmm. they'll have, you know, hepatitis. He Uh, actually said that. AIDS was easier to cure than herpes. Really? Yes. He said, because herpes hide in your body, so you got to flush it out. Wow. Yeah. Do you know anyone personally that he cured AIDS for? Yeah. You do? Yes. I know four four people. And and he did it with just herbs? Yeah, with just herbs. Hmm. With just herbs. You know, what's fun- you know what's funny is mm-hmm. I, 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 this has nothing to do with Dr. Sebi, but mm-hmm. I, I just can't help but to think about it. Um, what is his name? The the white uh, actor. Uh, Fran Lover? No, oh. they got AIDS. He got HIV. He got <laughs> HIV. Oh, 
two two and a half men? No, no, no. Yes, he was in that movie. What what is his name? Do you know what I'm talking about? White dude, crazy Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Friend? Charlie okay. Sheen. Charlie mm-hmm. Sheen had sought someone out like Doctor Sabi. Came on Doctor Oz, mm-hmm. said that he had been cured of AIDS, mm-hmm. HIV. Well, he didn't have AIDS. He had HIV. HIV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two different things. So sorry to the community. So yes, he had HIV and. I think it was like the next day later, he came on there to call the man a liar, saying that he hadn't been cured. Mm-hmm. It was just a real switch up. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, and I just, I just wonder, did uh, uh, Dr. Sabi did? I mean, was it like that for him? Anyone that he cured? Did they have to kind of deny that in in well, public or around certain people? Because he he sat there as a celebrity, praised this man. Said that there were no HIV antibodies in his body mm-hmm. whatsoever. The next show, the man is a liar. I still have HIV. I'm like, wait mm-hmm. a minute. What just happened here? Yeah, I have no idea about that. But as far as Dr. Sebi is concerned, yeah. is in the court records in which every, that's why I cannot wait for this Nick Cannon documentary to come out okay. about Dr. Sebi's life. Is anybody going to pick it up? Because, you know, I mean, Netflix, I know they will. But, I mean, you know, they're controversial about those kind of types. One thing I like about Nick Nick Cannon, you don't have to worry about anybody picking it up if you got the money to put it out yourself. That's true, too. So, I love that attitude. Because, and when I first spoke to Nick, because I I know Nick since, you know, working with Wendy Williams, um, just around the sets. Like, I'm just the cameraman. But... I didn't get to know Nick until we traveled to Honduras together. Okay. When, when we get to Honduras, we in the middle of a damn, they having a, a strike, the teachers, they burning bridges so the cars can't get past. So I'm, we're on our way to La Ceiba from the airport in San Pedro. And the teachers, they took the bridge. So we can't go forward and we can't go backwards. Mm. And the airport is probably five minutes away. Okay. So in my mind, I'm like, damn, I got Nick Cannon in the car with me. Um, with my man Jordan and another person, we in a car, and I'm in my home, my hometown, mm-hmm. and I I don't have nothing to explain why we stuck for hours. So instead of instead of Nick getting upset or saying, yo, what you got me into or whatever, because he understood the situation. There was nothing I could do. Mm-hmm. He said, yo, what's that right there? And I said, that's like a little mini mall. He said, what's in there? And I said, they got movies, um, the, the theaters. So we went inside this mini mall and watched um, Will Smith movie, Aladdin. Okay. I we still went, haven't seen that movie. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's nice? nice. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, have, I need to see that. I'm going to probably get it on Amazon Prime tonight. I think it's and there now. The funny part was we get inside the um, movie theater. So Nick was like, all right, let's go see the movie. So we get inside the movie theater. And I f- I'm forgetting we in Honduras, so we have to watch it in Spanish. So I'm the only one enjoying the movie. Queens of all shades, the struggle of finding your perfect foundation match is a thing of the past. Juvia's Place is a black-owned brand that shook the beauty industry by providing velvet smooth foundations for all skin tones. And they don't just stop there. They also offer bold and unique eyeshadow palettes, blurring, setting powders, and more. Products are conveniently located in over 1,000 Ulta Beauty stores or online at juviusplace.com. If you want to get your beauty on a budget, use the coupon code WINO for 10% off your online orders. <laughs> I'm the only one enjoying the movie. They did have subtitles. They, they did. Have, I'm, I don't even. But what Nick, what Nick surprised me because Nick understands a lot of Spanish because I didn't know that his grandmother's Mexican. Oh, so he understands like he like in Honduras like before I would translate for him, he already knew what I was talking about. Okay, so we we um we watched the movies into that um. Until the strike was over. So now the strike is over. We on our way back and it's raining. I mean, the drops was about the size of this. Each drop what? in Honduras, that rain is no joke. Okay. So we drive. And so I'm driving and Nick is like, yo, gee, drive real slow. I don't care what time we get over there. We all like, cause if anything happened, they're going to say they took us out because of this movie. So we, we driving and pitch Damn, dark. that's deep there for him to say that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But as you know, that's what everybody would have said. Yeah. Because everything, any death right now with anybody that mentioned his name, they're going to immediately um, 
connected with him the way Do I. Do you believe in that, though? No, I don't. Because okay. he was 83 years old when he passed away. Why not kill him? Right. If that was the situation. He was 83. Right. Okay. He was 83. So okay. um, I traveled with this man all over, and this man never looked back one time. Mm. Wasn't scared of nobody. Um, I mean, what do you have to be scared of at 83 years old? I was like, <laughs> you lived of, your damn life. Yeah, like One of the stories in the book that Doc did, we on our way, and I think it was in the Houston airport, and one somebody had gave Doc some weed, and we in the air, airport, and I said, Doc couldn't have smoked all that weed already. And I said, Doc, you still got that stuff on you. He said, you mean the marijuana? And I was like, oh, shit. You know, he was like, I, I was like, yeah. And he said, yeah. No, it was in his bag. And then I was like, yo. We can't go to the airport with I'm, that shit. I'm from Bronzeville. <laughs> Weed and airport, that's jail. <laughs> right. Guns too, shit, you everything. You feel me? Yeah. So we, he put his thing through the thing, the, his bag through the TSA. They missed it. No. They was like, sir, come here. This is, um, is, is this marijuana? And he said, yes, honey, and it's the good stuff. <laughs> I'm like, we going to jail. We, said, Damn. So in my mind, I was like, I'm going to say it's mine. I've never been arrested before. I got a clean record. Right. I'll do, you'll bond right out. He'll yeah. go. I'll get right out. So I'm already seeing, um, um, I'm ready to text my people. Yo, I might be away for two or three days. I don't know how they're doing yeah. in Houston. So the lady told him. And, I, and when he said that, I'm like, oh, shit, he playing with the wrong people. We're not in Honduras. He took out some card or and gave it to the lady. She took it, went inside some room. Okay. Came back out, gave him back his weed and asked, can she take a picture with him? Well, damn. I was like, what the hell was on that card and how can I get what? one of those shit? <laughs> yeah. They didn't do nothing to him. They didn't do nothing to him. Was it like a prescription card? Did he get a prescription no, marijuana card? You know it. how they had them cards. <laughs> I I didn't I didn't know what was on that card, but he gave it to her. She went, came back, gave him back his stuff, took a picture with him, and we went about our business. Wow. And I was like, Doc, you could have told me. I'm over here shaking like a leaf. He ain't say anything. Mm. I mean, it's a lot. I, I like how you in the back mm-hmm. when people do. Because there's a lot of winos that have been reading the book already because, you know, we started promoting this early to anticipate yeah, I appreciate, your arrival I, I appreciate that on too. this set. Um, you listed foods that, you know, that are good to eat. Yes. So if it's not here. No, it not. The picture you see right there, his name is. No, go, go on, back. Let me go back. Okay. That's Atum Dre. Who is from that? From Alkaline Gourmet. Oh. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, um. Alkaline chef. I'm looking in the book just in case y'all are wondering what he's talking about. Okay. He's an alkatricianist. That's his word. Alkatricianist. Yeah, okay. Interesting. That's his word. Okay. <laughs> said, we can do that. Okay. He was somebody that came to the house. I brought him to the house to meet Dr. Sebi. Okay. Is he this, already, this the first time? Or no. no oh, that, okay. He's already on the road with us there. Okay. Um, I brought him to the house to meet Dr. Sebi and Dr. Sebi had a beef with the guy that he came with. Oh. So in the book, you'll see what, what happened. Okay. To, but later on, it. after um, Atum and I reunited, Doc tasted his food and said, yo, gee, he has to come on tour with us. So he was the official chef for the Dr. Sebi lectures. Oh, so Dr. Sebi had personal chefs because I know I saw he was, Chef Aki. Chef Aki. In here, yeah. Yeah, Chef Aki was She's a doc- celebrity, yeah. like, vegan chef She as actually well. came to Honduras with us. Okay. And Chef Aki, I met, in this, well, in the book, you see how I met Chef Aki, because she called me, she called me and said, hey, brother, welcome to Atlanta, if I could do anything. Oh, nice. So I'm like, so I was on my New York I bullshit. I need to get Chef Aki on here, okay. Yo, she's great, she's great. <laughs> okay. So she called me. And I was on my New York City bullshit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, we already did a, a couple of lectures. I got this. This mm-hmm. ain't nothing. But then, but I gave her, I gave her some attitude. But then she said, okay, King, um, nice talking to you anyway. I said, damn, I'm talking shit. And she still was nice. So I said, let me just Google her. So I Googled her. And when I saw her picture come, I'm like, oh man, she's beautiful. And then I seen all her followers. So I called her back. Mm-hmm. And she actually put our flyer on one of her social medias. We sold 
450 tickets within an hour or oh, two wow. of her doing that for oh, us. Wow. So I told her, look, you need to, we have an Airbnb here in Atlanta after the lecture, you need to come and hang out with us. So she came and she cooked for Doc. Doc was like, oh man, you need to come to Honduras and this. She oh. came to Honduras with us. Um, <clears throat> hun, Does hun, she have a restaurant here in Atlanta or no? I don't know. I don't know. Well, she needs some investors. So lolly. She actually, yeah, <laughs> okay. No, nah, she, she's amazing. Okay. She's a good person. Like okay. we like family now. Okay. Mm-hmm. But she bad in that kitchen as far as a vegan chef. Yeah. That's, see, that's the hard part. I think that's why a lot to of people kind of hesitate good. to make it taste good. But you know what? Um, KT to our degree, he gave me some food yesterday. Mm-hmm. Had he not told me um, that was plant-based i thought i was eating like ground meat um, really that's the best i've ever tasted and i know him for his intellect i didn't know he could cook like that oh. and then his wife made these i thought it was egg rolls um you ever bit something that tastes so good and you like damn i only got a little bit left <laughs> <laughs> I was every i'm gonna bite say I, that and eat that later <laughs> look. I, I was, every bite i took i got tight Oh, wow. Nah, they amazing, amazing. And his brother, um, Blue Pill, he makes some sea moss that can rival any King smoothie that I've ever tasted. Like, Let me tell you, I'm going to holler at your people down. here. Hopefully they're listening right now to this podcast. Mm-hmm. If any one of them want to, like, partner with me to, like, partner up to give, like, vegan cooking classes, I will push that shit. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, you got- I would be the first person in line. Like, yeah. how? do I cook like this? All of them is here in Atlanta. KT is here. Mama Pill We just need here. some vegan cooking classes. Get an Airbnb. Look, get a big ass Airbnb. Look, have us buy the tickets. Have everything there. We all bring out. Look, I'm telling you. Like, yeah. the tickets will include the, the pots, the everything. Everything, yeah. No. Amazing. If... Every if all if all alkaline chefs I knew cook like that, I don't think I'll eat anything. You know what? I'm gonna personally like hire him and his wife to come in and and show me some stuff, and then you know hopefully we can. You know, gonna change your life. Yeah, because I mean I I I can make some nice mm-hmm. vegan dishes, but I wanna I'm telling you I be on Instagram and I'm seeing these new age vegan mm-hmm. chefs and I'm like damn. How do I make this? You know what I'm saying? Like because I don't eat like bread and stuff like mm-hmm. that either. So you know you gotta be a real bomb ass chef. To cook without like wheat and and he made some all the- chicken nuggets today that was not chicken nuggets and he made the ranch sauce. I was like, yo, this is not meat. At this point, <laughs> I didn't give a damn. I was just dead. was it tofu? No, don't don't eat tofu. Don't eat soy. So it's more like so beans that he's eating and um, everything like that. Plant based, plant based, I plant based. I, yeah, it was a plant. It man, I'm about plant. to hire this man. I'm, I'm ser- I'm serious. I'm gonna hire you him and his I'm wife pl- to come in and show me how to prop. I mean, I'm Lurie, gonna get down. Lurie, bring her the egg rolls. Bring, well, not the, <laughs> you call them the spring rolls. The bring spring her the rolls? oh because he's like I ain't using no yeah, eggs. So spring, spring rolls. rolls. That's the proper term. Okay. Because yes. okay. I'm like, this is not an egg roll. This is not. That's a spring roll. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah. But what's that texture in the middle? And there's another brother out here. His name is Bobby. Bobby Glenner. Okay. He's here in Atlanta. Shout out to Bobby. Shout okay. out to Bobby. He bought me some food. That's what I told you. I'm good. I, got, <laughs> he bought me. I know. I called to check on you yesterday. I'm like, that's what I do for my guests. I'm like, you all right. I'm good. I got I'm, somebody here cooking no. in the Airbnb. I'm like, damn. Bobby you bought, didn't even invite me over. See I know, how you I be know. doing me? My bad. My bad. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> bought me over some I thought it was tuna fish. He was like, no, that's not tuna fish. I was like, this is not tuna fish. I, I, I was dumbfounded. Like, and then, so I'm eating that food and then KT came up, or KT came up before him. So I'm already full. So okay. you know when you full, it don't really, yeah. it was still good. Mm. Now let me ask you something. Is there anything that you take every day that Dr. Sabi told you to take in order to kind of prevent some health issues? Yes. What is it? I take Maya every day. It's Maya? Maya and Sima and Simas, yes. Okay. What's Maya? Let's start Maya's with Maya. Maya's iron. Iron. Yes, iron. A oh. lot of a lot of us is um Iron deficient. Deficient. Yeah. I don't have that problem. Every time they run my blood work, I'm I don't ha- too much. I yeah. don't have an issue that I know of. Okay. Um as a matter of fact, last time I got a checkup, the doctor told me if they were to lose let's say if I was a John Doe, they would mm-hmm. categorize me as a male from 35, no, 35 to 45, not a 50 year old man. You 50? Yeah, I'm gonna be 51 this oh, year. Oh shit, I didn't even, wow. You curse, you could curse too? I thought I could curse, just me. 
<laughs> Winos, no, we. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm messing with you. Yeah, so, we with the fuck shit. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, no, I, wow, you look great. Thank you, Iron and C Moss. Okay. Yeah. I do want to. I do want to point out to the winos that are listening, or to anybody, because it's not just winos. A lot of haters mm-hmm. listen to. Oh, and you know, or people hey, who, haters. who want to join the wino mm-hmm. nation, but they're kind of. You know, they're trying to, they think we're cold or something. I don't know. But um, Damn. Damn. <laughs> I do want to point out that you have like all of the people that could possibly heal them in the back of your book. Ma- no. Ah, you have the resource guy. Okay, yeah, you have a- Ma'a, ah, mm-hmm. you have Sama, Sama Bowman from yeah, the that's Usha a, Village. That's his daughter in Usha Village. Annette Thomas, Greenleaf that's, Herbal that's Solutions. That's Mama Pill. She's here in Atlanta. A lot of people getting a lot of promotion right now. Mm-hmm. Abdul Bowman, Dr. Sabi's Legacy. You got phone numbers. Mm-hmm. Zave Bowman, Next Generational Herbal Products. Mm-hmm. Kelly Bowman, Dr. Sabi's daughter. You mentioned a lot of Atlanta right now. I'm serious. And this is a lot of people in Atlanta that they can reach out to. Right here. If they have Abdul problems. Abdul is on the West Coast. He's in L.A. Because, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people like, you know, because they'll reach out to me. Hey, I've contacted my aunt. She's not gotten back to me. Or her phone is like, her messages are full. And I'm like, she's one person and she's healing people. And one of the things that my aunt does is that she doesn't do anything in bulk. Everything she do, she customizes. Oh, wow. So if her waiting list, if her waiting list is a month, four or five months, it's because she's not going to just give you anything. Um, it's no general, take this. She need to talk to you, find out what's going on with you before mm-hmm. she could. Um, um, so she actually diagnoses you? Or no, she doesn't. Be she, I don't want to say diagnose. Okay. She assists you in getting out of the way of your own body. Okay. Okay. I just want to tell everybody. So if and they want this just, resource mm-hmm. guide, even just a list of things that Dr. Sabi shared with you that is like just good to eat, not good to eat, mm-hmm. some of his lectures, um, uh, chefs that he's worked with, mm-hmm. some of the celebrities. I know that you've named some of the names. Um, you got a lot of pictures and everything. I mean, this book is, it, it's a resource guide within Paul, itself. Paul Anthony. Friend, you know Paul Anthony, right? Paul Anthony. We're I- talking to, that's your cousin, right? Fran Fran Lover. Okay, Fran Lover. Okay, yeah, all right. So I didn't want them to wonder, like, who is he talking to in the room? (laughs) He doesn't want a mic. I've tried to give him a mic. He said, fuck off. He he doesn't do interviews. No, I'm playing, playing, I'm playing, playing. Now, Fran is one of, Fran saved the whole Dr. Sebi um, lecture here in Atlanta. Oh. Because when we got, we got to the Georgia World Congress Center and they was like, you need a, they told us that we needed to pay $7,200 for the use their equipment. I said, but in the contract, it says equipment included. And it was like, no, you didn't read the fine print that you needed to check off something. So they tried to sabotage it. So I'm like, damn, what I'm going to do? $7,200. And I'm going to tell Dr. Sebi, tell your people to send $7,200. If we said everything is done or we would have, we already paid for the right. Georgia world concert. Right. So I'm like, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to I said, my cousin. I said, yo, cuz. <laughs> yo, cuz, I need your help. I need your help. You know anybody that could um, mic up the Georgia World Congress Center? And he was like, um, yeah, um, me. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, nah, cuz, you don't understand. The Georgia World Congress Center. That's a big, yeah. He was like, nah, cuz, you don't understand what I got out here. <laughs> so I'm wow. like, he came through, lined everything up, like, the lecture in Atlanta, they had no idea. It was my cousin DJ from East New York who worked with all the rappers back in the days did that for me. So wow. Shout out to Fran. Shout out to Fran. Love all day. I have him like running my events and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. He, was, he was the one who saved our Atlanta lecture. Nice, 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 nice. Now, is there anything before we close this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I really want people to, to buy the book. Now, they have been buying it. Mm-hmm. Since we've advertised it. How has the book been doing? It's been doing well. Really? Yes. I really want to thank you on, be, be, on be, behalf of my family mm-hmm. and I. You know, so, I'm a, listen, no, anything no. that's helping our people. Yes, yes. I really appreciate that. I don't even that. need really need a price for it. I just mm-hmm. want to run it. Yeah. You a, know what I'm saying? So, a lot of people who's been buying it, they've been reposting. They've been sending me quotes from the book. They've been... Keep, keep talking. <laughs> They've been asking me a lot of questions about who's in the book and stories that's in the book. Okay. And one thing that I like about it is that buying this book is gonna you're gonna un, you're gonna read my journey with my sister. Mm. So I I was the most skeptical person that you ever gonna meet. Mm. And my sister is it's seven of us. 
but my sister and I, we're a year apart. We have siblings that's about 14 years older than oh, us. Oh, so you guys were close. We were the kids that my mom's had in the United States. She came from Honduras with my old, my four siblings, but they wanted American kids. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. an accomplishment for the Garifuna people. Mm. So um, she had my sister first, then myself, and then my brother Georgie. Well, Coco, they call him. My brother Coco was a terror. So they had to send him to Los Angeles. So while he was wilding out in Bronzeville, Brooklyn, mm-hmm. so he would go occasionally to Los Angeles with my brothers where they can, because they was like my father, because mm-hmm. my father was a merchant seaman. So he would go for about maybe six months. So oh, wow. George, um, my brother Georgie, he was, my mom's couldn't deal with him at one point. But um, so, but even I, we was always the kids that was in the house. Wow. It was always like we went through from time we was born. Y'all was bad so, as shit when y'all. Yeah. It was. <laughs> it, it, if you read. The it, two youngest is always the ones fucking you, up if shit. You no, know, actually, my youngest brother was okay. the baddest yeah, was that, every, bad that everybody knew. I was the quiet bad one. Like okay. he would do a lot of crazy stuff in our neighborhood. I was Georgie, but in somebody else's neighborhood where they didn't know my parents. So they couldn't tell on you. They couldn't yeah, tell on me. Right, yeah. right. Where you from? What neighborhood you from? <laughs> Look. So he was just, did, he did a ruckus where we lived. So I was another whole different person somewhere else. Okay. But I was real quiet when I was young. Like, because of my name, I had to fight all the time. Because my name is Avalado. So all of that avocado or I, you know how many times I had a fight because of my name dude my name is Latasha well my mating name mm-hmm. Latasha Transrena Howard wow okay. so I know okay okay Transformer uh, okay. Trans Am yep. Howard the Duck uh-huh. everything I was yeah, beating yeah. bitches asses left and right so it came you had to do what you had to I do I know avocado <laughs> so it, that's why I'm it, surprised oh oh because you was in New York like being the, raised Brooklyn, so that's different yeah. I was like in Honduras why would they like I was born in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. Like we was, we was that because back in the days it was no Honduran, no Guatemalan. Everybody was African. If you was black and you spoke another language, you, you were black African um, booty scratcher. Like back in the days, <laughs> and then so I grew up in that era. Where it was no kindergarten. We went straight to first grade, and it, the teachers back then they couldn't really. They didn't have a whole lot of kids like they have now. Wow. Wow. So. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I'm finally, finally, you accepted thank my you, invitation. Th- thank you. Thank you. Well. You're a hard band to get a hold of. No, it's easy to get a hold of me. I just had to make sure that you was who you was. And what? <laughs> I just, Listen, I know. First time you I, called me, I thought it was somebody <laughs> acting like it was you, to be honest with Are you. Are you serious? Yeah, I thought Why? It was somebody, for, because I had several phone calls prior being to... Um, due to some interviews you had and people thought that I was telling you certain stuff. Like so, what? What do you mean telling you certain stuff? S- well, some other interviews you had with other guests or well, some topics you put out and me being in the middle of a lot of that. So I had people calling me. Asking, oh, because you work for the Wendy Williams show. So they was asking me all these questions. I'm like, I don't know that lady. Listen, I don't know that Kevin lady. Hunter called me himself and I told him exactly who it was. He knows who my source is. Oh, okay. He knows who my okay. source is. I, I, don't, I, I don't care anymore. <laughs> okay, I don't okay. think the source cares. So okay. it's like, I'm not going to put it out to the public though, but he knows. I mean. Okay. Cause yeah. I was like, I had several phone calls and that it kind of got me tight. But then again, I'm at a point after my mother passed away. I know. Like you kept like, do- I was like, why is he dodging? But yeah, I yeah. understand that. You, yeah. don't, you don't want to be caught up in the mess. Cause I live, and I was putting out a lot a- of mess. I was in the belly of the beast. You get it? Oh. So I'm... I'm now, like, how close are you to the Hunters? Um... Reverse! Bleh, 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 reverse! Bleh. Y'all, y'all remember that damn song? Don't y'all laugh at me? Why knows? But for real, listen close and listen carefully. The olive leaf extract can reverse high blood pressure and diabetic high blood sugar, or the sugar, as some of our grandmamas may call it. It can also kill any nasty little bugs in your bodies like parasites, bacteria, fungi, tumors, and much, much more. And if that's not enough, you can also tell certain cancers like breast, prostate, colon, liver, and skin cancer to take a seat because the olive leaf extract has been known to fight it and their friend lupus can get it too okay so i need my winos to be in good health because we have some good dragging to do so visit myoliveleaf.biz to help get your health in order they not the hunters no more uh, they'll always be the hunters they got a baby wendy ain't changed her last name yet 
Yeah. Not well, I'm always gonna be grateful for them for putting me in a position to do as far as what I'm doing with my camera work, with okay. my video. So as far as my family's concerned, I'm forever grateful for them. It's a lot of personal shit that I don't like the way it went down. Oh. But that's something that I'm not at liberty to speak about. But I'm a for, I will say something positive. I'm a forever be grateful for the opportunities they gave me and for the connections that I made being next to them. Oh wow. You get it? Okay. So first time I heard anybody say anything positive about them. Nah, they they they're good. Like Wendy's an amazing lady. Um, I don't have anything negative to say about her. She's very generous, very she's I, I knew um mother Wendy. I knew the wife Wendy. I knew the the mother the, the um the Wendy not that you see on TV. Oh, okay. You get it? Okay. Like um Kev is Kev. Uh, I'm not saying he's perfect because nobody's perfect. Right. But I knew the the kid I grew up with. Okay. Oh, y'all grew up together. I know Kev since we was preteens. Like we grew up in in the hood together. So <sighs> the blogger in me is starting to come out. Nah, don't don't <laughs> keep on the team. Keep on the team. So I know that I know that Kevin that would take off his jacket and give it to you when you cold. Aww. What you turn into or whatever would I will say I'm surprised that when you was doing everything that you were saying. Oh, so I, you was watching? I shit. Hell yeah, I was watching. What? I'm I will say this publicly. I'm surprised that if it crossed his mind for one second that I would ever say anything that I ain't have no business saying, I'm surprised at that. What do you mean? Wait a minute. Anything. Anything. If he if if it ever crossed his mind that I would ever say anything that would jeopardize him or hurt him or his family, like I'm surprised at that. First of all, nobody heard Kevin Hunter's family, but Kevin mm-hmm. Hunter and Wendy Williams. Okay, that's a fact. I mean, mm-hmm. so if anybody is no, spilling phone, wine just, on them, I'm, I'm like going, if anybody is I'm, telling their business, I'm, I'm, like I'm they, going by the phone calls that I can not nothing to do oh, with your phone, show. Okay, can you give me an example of a phone call? What kind of phone call did you get? Um, just, about you, about me? No, not about you. Just okay. about the whole situation. Yeah, about you. Um, cause what kind of phone situation. call? Because I know this, you were dodging I, me for. I'm like, why won't this dude like? Because people would say or think that being that I'm close to both of them. Um, that I was feeding you information. Oh, you get it? Can I get some information? They very <laughs> nice people, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a forever be grateful look, I to knew, them. Look, I knew my source was legit when I was like, "Who is this? This is Kevin? Who?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I told everybody clear the room god damn it <laughs> clear the room mm-hmm. cut the tv off god damn, damn. it mr hunter <laughs> damn that's you and so him, he, just, he just he polite me ass like tasha could you back off me for a little while i just want to get through this and then you know i'll talk to you so i'm still waiting on him to talk to me wow. so you know he seemed nice he does he seemed nice like the person like i told you, the person i grew up with he seemed very respectful of like Wendy. He didn't want to say anything bad about her, mm-hmm. you know. So we'll see. We'll see. Shout you out know? to my girl Jill Ramsey. Jill, thank you for everything that you do for me. Jill is okay. Shout, who's nah, Jill? Shout out to Jill. Jill is Jill is my friend slash my lawyer. Jill, Jill Ra- oh that Jill. Okay. Jill, Jill is somebody that won't let me sign anything that it's not going to be beneficial to me. Jill has family. done some work with me. Okay. And it's funny. I was like, Jill, who are you talking about? Jill. Now I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Entertainment lawyer. Yes. Yes. She's well, done so. She's my sister. Oh. Before okay. any of that, um, she's my sister. And uh, I just, it's a lot of things that I'm able to go forward with because of the, before, because of her clearing my path. Najee, do that. That's, that's a, that's going to be beneficial to you. So okay. I just want to thank her for that. Okay. Shout out to Jill. I need to call her. I ain't talked to her in a minute. <laughs> okay. It's been a long time. Yeah. She did some work for me for, uh, no, for but. F- like just, she didn't charge me anything. I was like, Jill, let me pay you. She was like, nah, sis. She got a good heart. I'm like, what? She was like, I believe in you. I was like, mm-hmm. what? Wow. And I mean, that she's, she's a, a heavy hitter. She's, mm-hmm. she's worked with some, I mean, I think she put Wendy's deal together. Didn't she? Jill yeah. is a beast. Yeah, of course. A yeah. lot, a lot of 
a lot of stuff that Wendy was doing in the beginning was yeah. she was right there. She worked with DM. She worked with ask anybody in entertainment about Jill Ramsey, and you are gonna know. Who she oh is. no, I know her resume. I do, I do. I don't mm-hmm. know why. Just it took me a second to click. Maybe because I'm hungry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm gonna say your name again, Abelardo Guerrero. I call you Mr. Guerrero. So, Mr. Guerrero. but you said call me Mr. G. I'm like no, Mr. Guerrero. I appreciate thank that. Thank you. No, thank you for giving me allowing me this space. So you know, just tell. Um, build a little bit with you and I thought you was going to be mean to be honest with you everybody say that I Why? I'm be not bigger mean too. I thought you were going to be bigger, bigger. Yeah, I, what you talking about I thought you were going to be about 5 I'm feet 10 fit. I'm trying nah. to get big <laughs> yeah. nah, nah to but that, yeah. thank you for this on behalf of my family and I like, this is after being behind the cameras yeah. for so long to be in front of the camera it's different it's different yeah. but it, it feels good to, to just tell your story Man, I'm so comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah, I, I will have him. white shit in between my lips. I'll be like, God damn, y'all. Why y'all ain't tell me during the show? <laughs> I would have told you. I would have told you. Like, Yo, <laughs> we rolling with that shit. Put it out. Quick. Put it out. God damn, put it out. But anyway, no, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I know Fran is over here. Your cousin. Fran Lover. No, Fran Lover's not here from East New York. Representing <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> thank you, Fran. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Guys, if you want to uh, get the book, please. Yes. My Journey with Dr. Sabi. I'm just going to say Mr. G because I get so yeah, yeah, tired. Yeah, Mr. G, Mr. G, Mr. G. Mm-hmm. Uh, the link is below in the description box as well mm-hmm. as in the comment section. And like I said, this book in itself is a resource. So anybody that wants help, if you want resources to the help, the actual people, yes. uh, chefs, uh, uh, stories. What, real quick, okay. one of the main reasons that I wrote the book because I wanted people to know what kind of personality Dr. Sebi had. Mm. You get it? Cause I mean, when you said he was like, when he, I guess you came in the room and, you know, he had the pictures <laughs> and you was like, what you want, motherfucker? I was like, what the? Uh, because <laughs> I, I didn't know who he was until, yeah. you know, so I want people to see what kind of personality um, he had okay. and how important, and real quick before we get off, I want people to understand how important um, eating is. Yeah. No one's your healer besides yourself. Mm. People need to know that. Mm. People need to know that um, diabetes, lupus, sickle cell anemia. I have a, a friend who has sickle cell anemia for shit, as long as we was alive. And Doc was able to cure her in four months. Oh, wow. Yes. So I want them to know that these diseases are curable. Mm. Um, that And that our food is our medicine. Like... Don't go by what I say. Don't go by Dr. Sebi. Say he would tell you do your own research. I could just point you to um towards the right um direction. direction but, but you gotta follow through. You gotta follow through. <clears throat> so you know, wow. you guys that's listening, um, don't think that whatever Western medicine saying is the um is final. I mean, it's a practice. Is a they call it a medical practice, mm-hmm. and they're practicing on you, and so. You know, it ultimately ends and begins with you. Yeah. So, I mean, like I had thyroid issues mm-hmm. right after I had my baby. Wow. So I was growing like a gordier and I've always had thyroid issues, mm-hmm. but it was based on my diet. Okay. Took out certain things. Thyroid went back to normal. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah. if I introduce those things again, thyroid immediately fucks up. So the simplest thing <clears throat> Doc ever said to me in front, well, not to me, but mm-hmm. to a um, a patient at Gila, I, I'm the a patient at Usha. Mm-hmm. He said, if I scratch you and you pick at your scab, it's going to take a long time to heal. But if you leave it alone, it's going to heal faster. So all I'm doing is keep, I'm I'm stopping you from scratching. Let your body do what it's oh, supposed wow. to do. Oh, wow. That was deep there. He would, he would sit and talk to people for hours about that, stuff like that. And I don't even remember all the stuff mm-hmm. until it, it comes up. Um, so right. just right. get out of the way of your body. Let it do what it want to do. Okay. All right. Abelardo Guerrero Jr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where can they find you? Tasha Transformer. Now I ain't going to go there. (laughs) Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The haters out here, Uh they call me everything. Everything. So I'm used to it now. I don't don't know why they don't understand. Like I'm immune to the shit now. Okay. (laughs) It's It's like lotion to you. Right. I'll just be like, you come harder, please. Okay. They talk about my son. They called him a gremlin the other day. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was another blogger that called him a gremlin. Damn. I was like, damn, you had to come for a baby. Uh You shaped like a baby. He's shaped, he's shaped just like a baby. Oh, it was, was a man who did that? It was a man. Wow. Anyway, but it's all good. It's all well, good. Well, they can find me at yes. Dr. Sebi Book on Instagram. Okay. Dr. Sebi Book on Instagram. Or my other Instagram is Mr. G Photos and the number one. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now we got to go. Okay. We out, bitches. What do I have? <laughs>